You've made the big decision. After weighing the pros and cons, you've chosen to pursue an optometry residency, which is awesome, but now you have to apply for residencies, a process that can be very daunting. So let's dive in. Hey guys, it's Dr. Andreas here. If you're new to the channel, my goal is to help optometry students, residents, and your doctors with optometry related topics. If you like the video, please consider hitting that like button below and subscribe to the channel. And now, on to the video. So the first thing you wanna do in the step-by-step -step guide for applying to residency is to, of course, register for OR Match. As of this recording, the deadline is December 31st, which is kind of weird because most residency programs deadline is more like January 31st. And this is why the OR Match website says you should register for OR Match by December 31st, not that you have to. But don't risk it, apply by the deadline to be safe. Um, actually, one of the sites that I applied to, the VA hospital in Charleston, South Carolina, actually has a deadline of applying to their site on OR Match by January 1st. So just check with each residency site um, that you wanna to apply to so you don't miss a deadline. Now the fee to register on Aura Mash is $350, which is stupid, but it is a must. You gotta do it and it's worth it. And it lets you apply up to eight, 10 sites. You do have to pay extra to apply to each additional site after 10 sites, but don't do that. 10 sites is already overkill and I'll mention why in a bit. Next step is to decide which and how many programs you want to apply to. These can all be found on the Association of Schools and Colleges of Optometry database, also known as the ASCO database, uh, and is super helpful in terms of deadlines of specific programs and what additional requirements um, they may need. The big considerations are type of program and location. Are you doing ocular disease, contacts, or peds, or low vision? Are you doing VA hospital, ODMD, optometry school? Are you trying to stay local within your state, specifically out of your state, or is anywhere good for you? These are all main questions that can really affect your list of potential sites. If you're unsure, you can definitely mix and match. So if you're doing awkward disease, for example, you could apply to a VA, an ODMD, and an optometry school, and you can get a feel for each of them during the interviews. And for each type of site, you could also pick uh, in-state and out-of-state site. However, don't be like me. Not only was I indecisive at the time about whether I wanted to stay in Florida or explore somewhere else, but I was also questioning whether I wanted to do disease or peds, and both of my externships were in VAs, so I was like, should I go somewhere else to spice things up? So I applied to more places. Now, don't get me wrong. You definitely want to weigh all your options, but don't go too crazy with it. I ended up applying to eight residency sites. I think that's way too many because that was eight letters of intent I had to write, eight official transcripts I had to pay for, thanks Nova, eight interviews I had to travel to, more on that in another video, and then trying to rank those sites ended up being a massive headache and led to the conclusion that there is such a thing as having too many options. I'll admit too, I did get asked a few times by interviewers about where else I apply to, and I say they generally don't like if you apply to too many sites because then they feel like you're less likely to choose them. I would say do your own research, uh, decide where you are interested in and can see yourself going, um, and then narrow down your options yearly by applying to maybe five or six sites tops. If you're only interested in one or two sites, you can certainly apply to just those. Um, depending on the site though, it could be a gamble. I know people that apply to just one site because they're like, it's either there or I'm not doing a residency. And they definitely show the directors how interested they are in that site. Um, and they got matched there, which is awesome. But if you don't get matched, especially if you're applying on a site that only takes one resident, then you either miss out on a residency or have to scramble for one after match day, which from what I heard is definitely no fun. After you've made your decision, next up is my favorite step. Apply to the sites on OR Match. It's actually super easy. You just go to OR Match, look up the site that you're interested in, click apply, and that's it. I did it, I applied, cool. But it doesn't end there because your next step is the most annoying step of all, and that is getting your supplemental stuff to each site. Now, some of these required documents are pretty easy to send. Um, when you apply an OR match, for example, each site is going to automatically receive your NBEO scores at some point, so you don't have to worry about that. Each site will need your official transcript as well, 
but early on in the process, you can just email them an unofficial transcript. That way they're able to look at your credentials faster and may help in getting an earlier interview. They'll also need your CV, which is hopefully something you've made a while ago and occasionally update as time passes and you do something optometry worthy. Like always, keep your CV relatively short. Um, it shouldn't be more than two pages and I prefer bullet points and big font. Make it so that they don't have to spend too much time looking at your CV before they get to learn more about you. Remember, residency directors probably look at tens of CVs at each cycle, so the clearer and easier you make things for them, the better. I like to add a picture in there too, just as another way to personalize it. Check out the description below for a sample CV that I made. The design is very simple and is exactly the same that I use for my CV. Now, one of the supplement documents that you might not be familiar with is the cover letter, also known as the letter of intent. This one is tricky because you're telling the site you intend to go, but you're also telling other sites that you intend to go. Um, so how do we write this? What should I talk about and how long should it be? I have multiple examples of my cover letters in the description below. Because like I said, I did eight of them. And essentially, here's what you gotta do. Introduce yourself. Say how you found out about the site, which you can certainly say you found the site from the ESCO database. Um, but if you met somebody like a residency preceptor or a past resident, uh, feel free to say that. Then express why you are interested in that program. Uh, patient population, specialty contacts, precepting, specialist shadowing opportunities. Is it very close to home? Is it by the beach? Obviously, if you can show a site that you're interested um, in them in more ways than one, then I feel they're more likely to pay attention to you. Then express why they should be interested in you or why you'd be a good fit. You can mention a few things about yourself like you love kids or your board scores are high or you did very well in low vision clinic or you had a TBI when you were a kid so binocular vision fascinates you or your brother has keratoconus so you wanna be the best scleral lens fitter, et cetera, et cetera. But don't just list stuff that's on your CV because they'll get to it. To simplify this, what you wanna say is, hey blank, I heard about you from blank. Here's why I'm interested in you, blank, blank, blank. I think you'll be interested in me because of blank or blank. I've also enclosed my CV for you to review and I would love to get interviewed at your site at your earliest convenience. Then you just say thank you for your time and the ball is in their court. All of this should not take more than a page. None of my cover letters went over, uh, but every cover letter needs to be different. If you look at the example I provided below, you'll see that they technically have a template, but they're still very individualized because otherwise um, they're just reading a generic cover letter that has no personal touch. Last but not least, don't forget about recommendation letters. I've always hated this requirement because now I gotta walk up to somebody and be like, hey, write me a letter about how awesome I am. I need this done in three weeks. I always felt bad about asking other doctors for these favors, but at the end of the day, they are required. Um, you'll pay your dues eventually by writing a letter to someone else when you're a successful doctor. Um, and I'm pretty sure your professors have a rec letter template that they use uh, and just tweak a bit to personalize it, which is actually pretty smart. So don't feel bad, ask professors or preceptors or any healthcare professional who knows you or you think can make you look good. Are you applying for peds? Ask your peds preceptor who you've connected with. This process should be similar to what you did when you were looking for letters when you applied for optometry school. Okay, so you've applied and you sent all your extra stuff, now what? Now you wait for a response. It usually varies how long it takes for somebody to respond, but your next goal is to hopefully get an interview as soon as possible. You'd be shocked by how early you can get a residency interview. Some directors try to get interviews as early as first week of January because they don't want to get slammed by applications um, and interviews in the short month of February. And you don't want to have all your residency interviews last minute either uh, because then you'll be stressed out. It's difficult to ask for too many days off from clinic because of interviews. Um, and what's a better way to stand out than to get your stuff done super quick and say, I want to interview now. Well, don't say it like that, but if you get offered three different dates, try to pick the earliest one. In addition, getting your first interview done early is good practice. I had my first one on January 9th, which gave me some good insight on the process and what to look for in a site and how to prepare myself. And so by the time I got to my eighth interview in late February, I was ready for any question. Oh, and don't be shocked if you get offered an interview before they have all your supplemental stuff. This means that based on whatever you've been able to send them, they've already decided that they want to interview you. You rock. The final step to this whole application process is, ex is exciting, but it can be very difficult. I'll discuss this more in another video, but after you're done with all your interviews, you're going to want to rank your sites. Now listen carefully, only rank for sites that you're willing to go to. If you don't think you'll be happy at blank site, don't pick it, because on match day, you can get placed at any of your ranked sites. 
It's not like applying to undergrad or grad school where you're like, oh, I got accepted to the five schools. Which school am I going to pick? No, 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 no. You wake up one morning, you check your email and you get a message saying, this is where you're going. And that's where you're going, deal with it. Also, the OR match algorithm is super unpredictable. So it wouldn't be surprising if you ranked six sites and then you get matched with the sixth one. So only rank the sites that you want in descending order. Luckily, you won't know for sure which sites you're willing to go to until after your interviews are done. So it's not something you need to immediately worry about right now. And that's it, my step-by-step -step guide to applying to OD residency. Any questions you have, feel free to comment below. Like the video if you thought it was helpful. If you didn't like it, just hit the like button ironically and subscribe. And good luck with the whole process.